Okay, this is now uh, the second chapter of our demo video showing how PlayFab can be used with Unity. Uh, in uh, the first chapter, I configured our game catalog. Uh, sorry, I configured the catalog in the game manager, configured our new account, uh, downloaded the files, uh, ran Unity, and now I have our Angry Bots demo running here in Unity. So let me first start by just showing you what this demo looks like uh, before we start making any changes to it. So um, if I just hit play here, you can see the demo running. And I can run around, uh, and I can shoot some bad guys. And it's pretty basic. You'll notice that there's no UI, or um, there's nothing here to indicate that I'm doing anything other than just playing a game. There's no in-game catalog, there's no in-game item purchase or inventory or anything like that. Right? It's a very basic, very basic demo. So that's perfect for our uses, because we wanted to start simple. Um, and one of the things we've done here uh, to help make this demo, uh, frankly, easier to, to run through, is we've created a series of prefabs that are part of this demo project that already have some basic code using uh, PlayFab set up in them. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, two of these prefabs and uh, put them up in a project. I'm going to create the uh, register user prefab, and I'm going to bring in the uh, login user prefab. And uh, Actually, actually, you know, even before I do that, let me show you something else here. If you look at the menu here, I've got um, this uh, this uh, admin panel. This is basically, I'm sorry, not the admin panel. I've got the um, the game config menu option, and this is the PlayFab config. Uh, uh, I don't know what call it inspector wizard here. This is where you configure uh, the SDK, the PlayFab SDK in Unity for which game title you're communicating with. Because if you remember, if I go back now to my game manager and go to that properties dialog, you remember every game set up in PlayFab has a unique ID. And in this case, uh, the unique ID for this game is called 6F89. It's very important that Unity know which game I'm running so that it can post the right information to that game. So in this case, I'm going to go back to Unity now. And where it says title ID here, I'm actually going to paste in that title ID. And remember how I, I edited the catalog to be version 1? I'm going to say catalog version 1, and I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And now uh, all of the uh, code I write here in Unity, now it knows which game to connect to and how to, how to do that. So that's, that was the first thing I had to do. Um, uh, let me quickly look at, let me look for, take a look at, at some of the code just to show you a little bit about what's going on here. Let's look, for example, at uh, the login user uh, prefab. So let's look at that, and then we have a script prefab, playfab login user. Bring up the source code here for a second. Uh, and you'll see that all the function calls to uh, PlayFab are basically the same. They, they all follow roughly the same uh, format. So for example, let's scroll down here in the code. And let's look at the part which, where it actually logs into player. It's right here. This is the key, key code here. And you notice it's doing basically the same. It's a very simple uh, structure. We create a request object. Uh, in this case, it's, it's of type login with PlayFab request, we create that request object. We fill in some properties, username, password, and title ID. Uh, and then we call the function login with PlayFab, passing in the request object. And then we have two different callbacks here. If it succeeds, it's going to call on login request, or oh, sorry, on login result. And if it fails, it's going to call on PlayFab error. And if you go back to the documentation here for a second, uh, you'll notice that uh, all of these function calls uh, are already documented here in the web API. So for example, the function here again we're looking at is called login with PlayFab. And right here in the documentation is a login with PlayFab function. This is one we're actually using. And you can see the login with PlayFab function has a request with three properties, title ID, username, and password. And that's exactly what I am filling in right here is, 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 is this properties. And then we call uh, the function. And then you get back a response. The session ticket is a response. And if you look here, if you look at the, if it succeeds correctly and it goes to on login result, on login result is a function that has a login result property coming back. And uh, in this particular case, uh, that result is going to have the session ticket, which I'm able to uh, store and use in future calls. So anyway, it's a long, long way of saying uh, that every function call here is going to be following the same basic pattern, which is which is pretty easy. Okay, so let's take a look here. Uh, I've now added this, uh, this register user and login user uh, uh, prefab. And if I hit run, it should just work. Let's see what happens. So I run the game. And it's like before. 
Only now you'll notice that there's this new login dialog that pops up before the game starts. Um, but I don't, I don't have an account yet in the game, so I'm actually going to go ahead and hit, hit register, and I'm going to create a new account for myself. So I'm going to call. Uh, I need another username. Let's call this one. Uh, let's call this one. Um, I don't know. Unite demo or um, the angry demo one. Uh, I need an email address for myself. I'm going to call this. Uh, what am I up to now? James21 at playfab.com. I need a password, and I hit register. And it looks like it worked. Now, the game didn't change at all, right? I'm still just playing the game. The difference is that this time, I'm actually now logged in uh, behind the scenes. And it doesn't, it doesn't do anything in the game yet because we haven't written any code yet uh, using this player account. Um, but just to show you that, that something actually happened there, if I now go back to my game manager, and I go to users and click on the recently added tab here, it's going to show me all the users that were recently added to this game. And sure enough, here is the angry demo one user. That's the user I just created in the game. And if I click on this user, I can now see all the properties for this user. So I can see the username, angry demo one. I can see there, when it says origination organic, that just means that uh, the player came in organically, as opposed to coming in from Facebook or Steam or some other uh, system like that one. I can see my first login, which was just. Um, I mean, it's going to, in the time here, you can see right there, uh, 2.18 p.m. PST, which matches my system clock here, which is great. Uh, and there is my 2,000 credits of virtual currency. So you can see that it, it, uh, it successfully added my virtual currency. Um, but if I look, for example, at my items, I have no inventory yet. I don't actually have any items yet in this player's inventory. Uh, if I look at logins, I can see I haven't actually logged in yet. I created my account, but I haven't actually logged in uh, myself yet, uh, and so forth. So let's go ahead and let's actually um, uh, actually, before, before, uh, let's, let's now start to add some more things. I'm going to go ahead and just for kicks, um, one of the things your customer service team will do is they will use this tool uh, to help manage your game. And so one of the things that your team may happen to do sometimes is to give new virtual currency to a player. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and give myself another 1,000 GCs uh, just because I felt like it. Um, and let's go ahead and add that. And boom, you'll see I now have 3,000 units of the GC virtual currency, which is great. Uh, okay, there's my account. Let's go back now to the uh, to Unity, and um, and actually you know, let's end this chapter here. This, so this chapter basically covered adding the register user and login user dialog to the game. Uh, the next chapter we're going to look at actually uh, adding uh, um, the marketplace and doing in-app purchase. Okay, so let's end the chapter now.